Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Senator Cortez Masto from Nevada. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the ranking member for having this hearing. It is so important. Obviously, uh, housing, affordable housing in all of our communities is essential. Uh, and let me just start by saying thank you to all of my colleagues in the bipartisan work that we are talking about, both on the uh, Choice and Affordable Housing Act that we've been talking about today, as well as the Family Stability and Opportunity Vouchers Act. You know, in Nevada, we've made several changes to encourage landlords to accept vouchers. So I wanna thank my colleagues uh, on both sides for, for the work that they're doing here. Um, housing, affordable housing. In my community, in my state, we have statewide coalitions, uh, state, local, federal, we all work together because housing is about not just homelessness, it's about workforce housing, it's about senior housing, it's about veterans housing. It's, it's a number of things that we need to address uh, to ensure that at all levels people can afford to have that home. And uh, the challenge I have in my state is all of the above. And it starts, part of that is on building affordable housing so we can keep the costs low. The other part is what we've talked about is so that the individuals that have housing, whether they are, want to be owners or renters, they can do that, right? And so how does the federal government play a role in both of those? In the West, in Nevada, uh, when we're building housing, it starts with the land. And so I so appreciate Senator Lamas' concerns and talk about uh, at the federal level, one of our key partners, unlike the West, uh, rest of the country, is the federal government because they own most of the land. In my state, it's over 80%. So they have to be essential partners when we're identifying the land to build, hopefully affordable housing, because that's where it starts. How, what's the cost of the land to add to this? And so any work that we can do to address and bring the federal government as part of it, reduce the bureaucracy, uh, is going to be key to this affordable housing. Uh, I, I want to talk about one of the pieces of legislation um, that I uh, have introduced, which is um, really to reauthorize the Home Investment Partnerships Program. I know, Mr. Tisler, um, you were asked about this earlier. Home is the largest affordable housing block grant. Um, as you all know, it was first authorized in 1990. My bill would update the home program. Some changes would include improved access for community land trusts so that we can recycle the subsidy, curb recapture penalties for home ownership assistance when a service member is deployed or a recipient dies, and uh, allow local governments to leverage future funds by providing a loan guarantee opportunity with home funds. This is similar to the Community Development Block Grant Program. My bill also reduces the duplicative inspection requirements, removes the requirement property owners um, with one to four units maintain a wait list, and makes it easier for community housing development organizations to retain an operational board and among other changes. Uh, so there's a lot to it to try to figure out how we make this. Uh, do away with the bureaucracy. How does it be, work as part of the system? And so, Mr. Tizzle, let me just ask you this. Um, the legislation I worked on, because I've, I have a lot of um, service members in my state as well, um, would, uh, the proposal I have in my bill would allow service members to receive down payment assistance without fear of recapture if they were deployed um, uh, somewhere else. Can you talk a little bit why that is important? Thank you, Senator. Uh, and we're so looking forward to the home reauthorization and the modernization and, and everything else that you're looking for here. But when we have service members that are going out to protect our country, we should not have to penalize them uh, in terms of leaving their home. Um, and the federal government needs to work together across interagencies to make sure it's not just the home program, uh, but other programs too, that when people are deployed, there's not a penalty for that. Um, and so uh, our organizations, not just in Nevada, but across the country, support what you're doing in terms of this in a bipartisan way to look at um, our, our service members. Thank you. And then let me jump to manufactured housing, because we've talked a little bit about that. But I think this is key uh, for the conversation we're having here. In Nevada, about 6% of families live in manufactured housing. Uh, some own the land under their homes, but others rent. And renting a lot in a community can lead to a lot. Uh, high lot rents, evictions, or sell of the community. Um, we were able in the last appropriations bill to include um, legislation that I, uh, that I introduced to create a new grant program to help manufactured home communities. Um, this program, which is the Preservation and Reinvestment Initiative for Community Enhancement, would provide funds to improve infrastructure, add or upgrade tornado shelters, improve roads, sewer, and water, and also provide funds to replace outdated mobile homes. Um, Mr. Tisler, let me start with you. 
Um, why should Congress prioritize the needs of residents of manufactured home communities? Um, Senator, uh, I'll use the acronym PRICE, that way we, uh, I, I don't take a lot of the time. But in terms of manufactured housing, it is very important because it's, it's the answer to many rural areas. Um, nonprofit resident owned communities are important uh, to be able to make sure that the rents aren't going up, that they're not being captured by these institutional investors. And so manufactured housing has the ability to increase supply in an affordable way. Uh, and I think that moving in that direction has that answer uh, to be able to do that. And, you know, we have organizations that talk about energy efficiency, and it's not for the greening, the climate uh, perspective. It's about the green in their wallets. Uh, and that's what really happens with this energy efficiency kind of uh, rehab and things along those lines that are happening in the bill for um, manufactured housing. So it, it looks at the holistic point of people's wallets so they can make sure that they're able to make the um, make their payments. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cortez. Master Senator 